Hello again everyone and welcome back. I present to you my exclusive White Forge Flicker Strike, perfect for a budget mid-league experience. This build can tear through most content in the game without dying to random one-shots and off-screen on-death effects. This is achieved with high evasion and spell suppression, permanent life leech combined with fortify and berserk. Furthermore, incoming damage reduction can be achieved using nodes on the Atlas passive, such as Wellspring of Creation. It is made for a budget of less than 40 divines by utilizing powerful combination of certain cheap uniques that stack very well with the ascendancy of slayer our wild flicker strike takes advantage of both power and frenzy charges attacking at a rate of 22 hits per second each hit clears entire screens of monsters while dealing massive amounts of damage to single targets while using wild flicker strike a perfect budget build to end the misery of most pinnacle bosses in seconds and yes this is viable for solo self-bound as well. As long as you know where to obtain some of the key uniques used in the build, our main weapon, Void Forge, draws from the Uber Elder, Farrell's Fur from the Bestiary Boss, Farrell First of the Plains, and Bottle Fate drops from Cortex Map. Although the build can handle most content and run T16 maps without dying, I wouldn't recommend the build for hardcore players due to the lack of higher physical damage reduction and flat light. It is easy and simple to play the build without too much reliance on temporary buffs like most of the builds out there. The way how Flicker Strike works is when you attack with this skill, it consumes each frenzy charge to bypass the cooldown for each cycle of attacks. There are several ways to instantly gain back all our frenzy charges in this build without relying on the timer from the aspect of the cat, one of which is from Blood Rage. As long as it's active, we have 25% chance to gain each charge on kill during boss fights. The Sword Mastery gives us an 8% chance to gain a charge for each hit. Moreover, the superior version of the skill gem grants us a base 20% chance to gain a frenzy charge for each hit. By default, Flicker Strike teleports you to an enemy and strike once. With the help of Multi Strike, this repeats twice and much faster. You can set the skill to always attack without moving for a better playstyle experience. During bossing, place the ancestral totems, turn on Blood Rage and Berserk, then apply Ball Flicker Strike to end the fight in seconds. The first choice of our ascendancy is Brutal Fervor. As this enables the Slayer to have permanent leech which helps us to survive easily through all the 10 acts. Our second ascendancy, Impact, opens up our damage and clear speed to significant levels. This is followed by our third, which is Overwhelm. By this time, you should start investing in critical strike chance and specking from Precise Technique, Keystone, and the Leveling Tree. By the time you are level 90, you should be able to grab Pain of Legends which is a massive damage boost against all bosses. For a choice of Pantheon, I highly recommend Soul of Prime King, mainly due to the immunity it provides us to freeze. It also prevents our build from getting perma stunned while mapping. For a minor guard, Soul of Aberath is the best in slot as this makes us immune to burning ground and makes ignites less effective against us. For a choice of bandits, I recommend siding with Alira since we are not using cluster jewels and all her bonus benefits us on a budget. Here are the troublesome map modifiers to watch out for. Almost every other map modifier can be of less impact, but these are the ones which needs to be completely avoided. We are supporting our main skill gem with melee physical damage, trinity, multi-strike, close combat, and rage support. The way how trinity works is, each time when you hit with void forge, a massive 700% of your physical damage is gained as a random element. Hence, in 3 to 5 hits, we can easily get the support gem activated, as you deal the same amount of all 3 elements, fire, cold, and lightning damage. You will notice a triangular icon on this buff, which means it's fully functional. At this stage, Trinity applies a 30% more elemental damage plus a 16% elemental penetration. This is one of the strongest support gems in the game at the moment, if used correctly in the builds. Close Combat is another powerful support gem, perfect for skills such as Flicker Strike and Ambush. Since our melee strike range is short, we get a full 39% more damage. When you attack an enemy with a sword or an axe, you will notice a buff on top. This is called Combat Rush. When active, you gain 20% more attack speed until your next leap slam. This buff greatly benefits our ancestral totems and skills not supported by this. Void Forge greatly benefits from flat physical damage, and with the help of Hound Spirit and Vitality, we are able to sustain 50 stacks of rage until we apply Berserk. This means rage support grants us a 79 to 142 flat physical damage at maximum rage. 
With the swift rage regeneration rate, Berserk can be applied during boss fights and league mechanics. This is one of the strongest buffs in the game as it provides 20% more damage and attack speed, 30% movement speed and 19% less damage taken from all sources. A helmet slot contains aspect of the cat, hence any support gems you place here will be supported by this skill. Swift affliction and less duration helps us to toggle between two aspects quickly, thereby maintaining maximum frenzy charges. Make Make sure not to have any links in the ancestral protector and multiple totems. You can place enduring cry on left click. Assassin's mark should be independently linked to mark on hit and life tap. Make sure not to have any links with Herald of Purity. In order to have all the auras active at the same time, you need to have all mana reservation nodes specified in the POB. This includes Charisma which is located away from all the other nodes. To access this, you can skip the following nodes to prioritize for the rest of the passive nodes in the POB. Once you have accessed these, you can focus on the rest of the passive tree. Along with this, you need a level 3 enlightened gem linked to all of your 3 auras from the skill gem. To have a corrupted plus one to level of socketed gems implicit on your boots. It can turn your level 3 enlightened to a level 4, giving you even more space for your skills. This is completely optional. Plus, you don't need anything other than Hyrie's Truth for your gear slot. A level 20 vitality should be sufficient to generate rage even without the flasks. To set up our gear slots, our main hand weapon is a Voidforge Infernal Sword, which drops from the Uber Elder fight. Every ounce of flat physical damage is important for this weapon, so if you were to upgrade this weapon with 30% quality using Illic in Betrayal or using Tainted Currency, this would add millions in the DPS. If you have the currency, you can try getting a double corrupt with attack speed and level 10 fortify implicit, as this would be the best upgrade for the build. If you get the fortify support, you can remove the fortify mastery and replace these nodes with increased duration to maintain the full stack of fortification, as each stack makes you take a total of 20% less damage from hits. The second important piece of the build is the Pharaoh's Pro. It provides tons of flat life and evasion, but the main reason why this is irreplaceable is because you gain full stack of frenzy charges when you gain cat's stealth. The only possible upgrade for this item would be its replica version, which comes with its severe cost, but worth it if you can gain access to masterful form using the forbidden jewels. This combination will make the build significantly tankier as each endurance charge also grants us a 4% additional physical damage reduction. The third important part of the gear is the Calm Spirit Gloves. This is the item that enables us to have permanent rage and berserk. It comes with a slight downside of converting life regeneration into rage regeneration. But this shouldn't be of much problem as our build is focused heavily on life leech instead of life regen. And since our build relies on frenzy charges, the best upgrade for this item is a plus one frenzy charge corruption. And even though it comes with a significant price, it is worth the upgrade. Our next important piece is the high reach truth as it comes with a level 30 precision. This takes care of all the problems from lack of accuracy in our gear setup. Make sure to anoint frenetic as this adds an additional frenzy charge. Dark Race Vector is the best choice for boot section as it provides another frenzy charge at the cost of reduced duration. If you're losing all of your frenzy charges even while stationary, you can grab the charge mastery for increased duration instead of damage. As mentioned earlier, a plus one corruption is optional, but if you do get it, a level three enlightened upgrades to level four. There are several good choices for lab and chance. All of these improve the damage of the build. Your helmet should contain aspect of the cat suffix modifier, which you can easily craft using the best theory beast, Pharaoh's first of the planes. Every other modifier is completely flexible to suit your budget and build requirements. There are several lab enchant options that are good. Pick whichever that is available to you. The ring slots are completely flexible to suit your build requirement and resistances. You'll need tons of intelligence for your build anyway. I would recommend using a taming, which is obtained by bendering all three versions of the barrack rings. This provides us with tons of flat elemental resistances and increased elemental damage on a budget. Finally, for a build slot, a rare steel Stygian Vice with flat life and resistance should work well on a budget. You will most likely need a strength modifier on the Abyss Jewel. The only possible upgrade I can recommend for this is either a Mage Blood Heavy build or a Headhunter.
Hunter Leather Belt. If you haven't upgraded to Replica Pharaoh's Fur with the Forbidden Jewels for Impact, a Watcher's Eye and an Inspired Learning would be the best choice for jewels for this build. The Watcher's Eye can have any of the modifiers that fit your budget. Finally, it's time to cover the flasks. Our main life flask can deal with bleeding and corrupted blood on a budget. The best choice of utility flask include diamond flask, jade flask, silver flask, and sulfur flask with modifiers to attack speed and critical strike chance. Here are some of the best unique flasks that go well with the build. A bottle of faith is the best of them. Now it's finally time to cover my top recommended version of the dualist leveling using shattering steel. Here are the leveling trees you can follow for the smoothest leveling experience. Leveling trees are available through the UI. I would recommend not to switch to flicker sprite until you hit level 65 and you have the ascendancy notable overwhelm. Make sure to remove precise technique and the leveling tree once you swap to the main build. The choice of unique items we will be using are the following. Of these, Rigwald's Crest is very powerful as the Spectral Wolves benefit greatly from our Impales, Pride Aura, and Vulnerability Curse. Initially, I would recommend you use a rare two-handed sword with increased physical damage. Follow the simple and cheap vendor recipe from Act 1. Alternatively, you can use a low tier Essence of Contempt and then craft increased physical damage. You will have to keep upgrading your two handed sword after each act until you obtain Rigwell's Charge in Act 4. Follow this chart for your gem setup while leveling through each act. If you enjoyed this video, consider throwing a like and subbing to the channel and let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching.